Sinestrunk. Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch this. Here's another collection of arcade games that the Super Nintendo missed out on, and no, I don't realistically think that these games would look the way they do if they were ported to a home console, but it does give me a good excuse to talk about arcade games which I love doing. This is part 9 of this series, so I've already covered a ton of stuff, everything from X-Men to Jurassic Park to Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, on and on, but now we're getting into much more obscure territory. Starting with Dragon Ball Z, which had a few arcade games made in the 90s that stayed in Japan, all made by Ben Presto. The first one is simply titled Dragon Ball Z, released in 1993, and it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with eight characters to choose from. And the art style is pretty cool, but the combat is kind of goofy. Instead of jumping, you just kind of float around the screen. There's no sense of weight or gravity, so it's just kind of awkward unless you're into attacking people's groins like this. The next game came out a year later titled Dragon Ball Z 2 Super Battle, and this is a completely different kind of fighting game. The action is really fast, as you can see, so it's really tough to get the timing down for certain moves, which, by the way, are all the standard Street Fighter commands that are easy to figure out. But yeah, this game is a great spectacle if nothing else. Instead of floating around, you can actually get launched into the air and fight up there for a while until you get spiked down into the ground again. It's pretty fun. The third Dragon Ball Z arcade game in the 90s is Dragon Ball Z VRVS, or Dragon Ball Zvrs as I like to call it. And this was also made in 1994 with some help from Sega. This game is totally different as you can see, taking an over the shoulder view for each player. And again, this game looks great and is a cool spectacle, but it's kind of weird to play. It is really satisfying to just haul off and punch a dude square in the face though, you gotta love that. I would have loved to have seen this in the arcades in the US, if nothing else than just for the constant screaming. Alright, let's move on to lesser known games like Ganryu, made by Visco in 1999, and I love me a good arcade platformer. This one has five levels, each ending with a boss fight, like this one here that's a giant woman tank with a machine gun arm, or this crazy looking wall boss that looks straight out of Contra. Your character's abilities are kinda similar to games like Strider and Shinobi, so this is a great looking game that's a good time. It got ports for Neo Geo and Dreamcast, and it's worth playing on those platforms as well. Next is Nemo, made by Capcom in 1990, and this one did not get a home console port anywhere. It's another arcade platformer, and despite this being based on the same source material, this isn't a prequel or a sequel to the Little Nemo game on NES. Nemo the arcade game is its own thing, and it's pretty good, despite Nemo looking like a child version of John Cusack in pajamas. There's seven levels to get through, and while you're not wearing animal costumes, instead you're fighting this alien thing that looks like a boss from our type defeating enemies while zipping around on this train, and hopping around on clouds. It's a quality playthrough. Gunmaster is a beat-em-up made by Metro in 1994, and what makes this one stand out is that it utilizes fighting game inputs, so you can do flying flaming kicks like this, for example. There's 14 levels here, and after completing the first level, you get your choice of where you want to go next, which is pretty cool, so this is a pretty long playthrough for a beat-em-up. And there's tons of boss fights, weapons, and a little bit of challenge with this one as well, so I would say it's worth your time. Here's one that actually did get a home console port called Thunder Fox. This one's made by Taito for arcades back in 1990, and it got a port to the Mega Drive the next year. North America never got a Genesis port, but the original arcade game is entertaining. It's always hilarious to see a one-man army just annihilate everything in his path. He's all shirtless and ripped, but he's taking good care of his knees with those knee pads, and uh, is he wearing a dance belt? But yeah, this one's got some classic video game nonsense, like taking out a tank with your bare fists, you fly around a couple shoot 'em up levels, you go jet skiing, you callously run over people in this Jeep. Yeah, it's not the best game, but it's good for a laugh or two. Joe and Mac Returns is a continuation of the Joe and Mac series made by Data East in 1994, and it's pretty much just a Joe and Mac version of the game Tumble Pop, which means it's a single screen platformer where you're gunning for the high score by clearing each screen of enemies. It starts out really simple, but eventually you run into a huge ass triceratops, a huge ass woolly mammoth, and a huge ass serpent creature that looks like something out of Evo's Search for Eden. This is another one that never got a home console port, so you gotta keep an eye out for this game. I've got two games here made by SNK, and I'm planning on giving SNK and Neo Geo its own video someday where I go over all this stuff, but there's two games I just found out about that I thought I should include here. First is Top Hunter, Roddy, and Kathy, and this one is like a beat-em-up run-and-gun hybrid, while throwing in mechanics like being able to jump between two different planes like in Fatal Fury. 
This is a really polished game that deserves more attention. It's available for download for the Switch, so if you like what you see here, I'd recommend checking it out that way if you can. Another well-made SNK arcade game is Robo Army. It's typical beat-em-up stuff, but the way enemies fly apart is great because it allows you to find random mechanical body parts laying around so you can use them as weapons. And because it's SNK, you know the sprite work is going to be fantastic with some really good-looking bosses in particular. This one cuts a quick pace, so it's a fun playthrough with a second player. Next we got Riding Fight, made in 1992 by Taito, and it's pretty much like they just made an entire game out of the Neon Knight Riders level from Turtles in Time. While occasionally fighting bosses like this chainsaw dude before our hero declares this a gravy day? What? These one-on-one -on -one fighting sections can be kind of awkward to control, but the bosses look great, and the game does a nice job changing things up a bit to a side view so things aren't so monotonous. Again, no home port here, so yada yada any way you can, you get the idea. Here's a game called Van Dyke. No, not that Van Dyke. This is an arcade game made in 1990 by UPL, and it's available on the Switch Online service. And this game may not look like much, but as far as top-down action games like this go, it's pretty good. You got these weird ghoulish looking things, you got dudes with mustaches wearing wrestling tights and wolverine claws, you got this guy who shoots worms out of his hands, okay? I like weird games like this where the enemy design is just all over the place, and the gameplay here is pretty good too. Zero Team USA is another beat-em-up, this one made by Seibu Kaihatsu in 1993, and it's a well-made game with four playable characters, spanning seven long stages, so this is a girthy playthrough for a beat-em-up. The controls offer more than just the boilerplate beat-em-up stuff, like for example, if you hold a direction on the joystick as you're punching a guy, you'll do a different move, with the uppercut being the riskiest. It does the most damage, but it leaves you open to attacks from other enemies. You can also roll and counter to a certain extent, so this game is just as much about avoiding damage as it is kicking the crap out of guys. Overall, it's a pretty well-balanced game, and it's a good time. Next is Dino Rex, and uh, okay, I didn't put this game on here because it's good, but because it's friggin' hilarious. I mean, look at this! That is some masterful sound design right there. These dinosaurs fight like they're drunk, it's awesome. It was made by Taito in 1992, and yeah, it's jank as hell. The animations are bad, the controls are weird, there's a purple dinosaur you can fight, so you gotta love that. There's also these bonus stages where the game turns into a side-scroller, where you go around chomping helicopters and wrecking limos. Yeah, I had to include this one because it looks so ridiculous. It's good for a laugh with a second player. Finally, we've got Dragon Gun, a light gun shooter on rails made by Data East in 1992, and this is one of those arcade games that wastes zero time. Immediately, you're blasting wave after wave of aliens and mutants before less than a minute later, you're fighting this huge dragon, and you got giant skeletons coming after you. Are you trying to stop me? Yes, yes I am. You sound surprised by that. But yeah, this is one of the most video gamey video games I've ever played, if that makes sense. It is stupidly over the top with the amount of stuff it throws at the screen, and it does not let up. So make sure you check this one out any way you can. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.